Good evening all students. I am Asia Miss from Villa International High School. Uh, today I am going to cover about this topic of Unit 2 which is Managing Finance. Now under this topic I would be looking at what is profitability, what is liquidity and why does business fail. Now let's have a first look at what is profit. Now as you all know simply the term profit is the excess of revenue after expenses but in our syllabus the profit again distributes further into three different types. One is the gross profit. Gross profit is the difference between revenue or turnover and cost of sale. So the, the cost that is associated directly with the cost of production. So this results in gross profit. Now the second type is operating profit. Now this is the difference between gross profit and business overheads. Uh, so the formula here is operating profit is equal to gross profit minus operating expenses. Now profit for the year, it is the profit made by the business for the entire year. So after all of these steps, the remaining part. So profit for the year is equal to operating profit minus the finance cost. Now what are the ways to increase profit? Now if you really look into the concept of profit, Profit simply includes two things. One is total revenue and total cost. So our, our profit formula is basically this. So if you really think about ways to increase in profit, it's either increase in total revenue or reducing total cost. So this simple uh, thing here would help you really remember what it is about. Now, most businesses want to increase their profits if it is possible because ultimately most of the uh, company's objective is to earn a profit. Now what are the approaches that can be used? One thing that they can do is adjust the marketing strategy, the four P's. The, the four P's are the price, product, place and promotion. So by using uh, different strategies for these four different P's you can find ways to increase your sales and uh, get more customers. Another thing the co company can do is find new markets which will going to bring in more, pro more sales which means more revenue. Uh, the, uh, the third thing they can do is diversify. Now diversifying is very very important because if you depend on one product and if the product fails for some reason then it's going to be a lot of trouble because your only source of income goes down. But if a company has more than one product that it can depend on then it means that company will, can compensate if even if one product makes uh, less profit. Another thing you can do is eliminating competitors. Now in order to do that you have to merge or get involved with the takeover. So you kind of become one company and you no longer have the competition. Uh, and the uh, other thing the companies can do is disposal of non-profit activities. Now you can uh, check which departments are not making a profit and you can uh, cut down on those and you can reduce your cost. Now let's have a look at what is profitability. Now profitability is the ability of a business to make profit. Now the information contained in the state of comprehensive income can show how well a business is performing. So in order for a company to really get investors and everything, they have to prove their profitability. So some calculations are actually involved in this particular topic. Uh, so three profit margins can be calculated, which is gross profit margin, operating profit margin, and profit for the year. Now let's have a look at the formulas. Now gross profit margin, gross profit over revenue into 100, op uh, 100%. Operating profit margin, operating profit over revenue into 100%. Profit for the year margin, net profit before tax over revenue into 100%. Now one uh, small thing you can try to remember is in all of these profitability formulas, the denominator is revenue. So if you keep that in mind, I think it will be very easy for you to understand and uh, 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 remember the formulas. It's very important you by heart the formulas because we do not provide the formulas in the exam. Now this is what is called a comprehensive income statement, it's otherwise known as profit and loss statement. So this is where basically uh, the information for the calculation is 
uh, uh, from. So, you do not have to worry about how to get this information, it will be given in the question. Now, how to increase our profitability? Again, it is the same thing, you, you follow into this, the same thing comes here. So, increasing profit margins will also improve performances. Now, if profit margins can be raised, the business will make profit at the existing uh, level of sales. The profit margins can be improved in two ways, either raising prices or lowering cost. Now, lowering cost can be like if you can find cheaper raw materials, that is also a way to cut down cost or using existing resources more efficiently is also a way. Now, moving on to liquidity, what do you think is liquidity? Now, profitability and liquidity comes alongside. Usually on uh, managing finance questions, you will have to assess whether a company is profitable or whether it is also having a good liquidity position. Now, let us have a look at what this is about. In simple terms, liquidity refers to the ability of a business to pay off its short term debts on time. That means uh, your uh, if you owe any money to your creditors, you should pay. If you owe any money to your suppliers, you should pay. So, these kind of uh, payments, if, it, if, it, if a company can be able to uh, pay on time, that is called as a good liquidity position. Now, liquidity refers to the ease with which assets can be converted into cash. As you all know, a company will have two types of assets. One is called a non-current assets. The other one is called a current asset. So, non-current assets cannot be easily turned into cash. For example, a building. Only if you sell a building, that you can convert it to cash. But suppose you have uh, some uh, finished goods uh, or stock of goods which comes under current assets, it can be easily turned into cash the moment you sell it. Now, how do we measure liquidity? Now, there are two formulas to check on liquidity. One is called the current ratio, the other one is called the asset test ratio. Now, current ratio is a liquidity ratio and focuses on the current assets and current liabilities of a business. Now, it can be calculated using the formula current assets divided by current liabilities. Now, current assets, as I mentioned earlier, refers to those assets which can be converted into cash. And current liability here, we refers to the short term liabilities. So, the ratio when you calculate, the answer will come also as a ratio. So, if your answer here is 1, that means it is 1 is to 1, which means you have 1 asset to pay for the 1 liability. So, if the, if the answer you get is less than 1, then we can say the company's liquidity position is not so good. They should have at least 1 or more than one for every one liability that they owe. Now, like I said before, in among the current assets also, there could be assets which might not be easily uh, turned into cash. For example, stock. Uh, stock will take some time to sell. That's why sometimes uh, businesses will go on sale because they want to get rid of all, the, all of their uh, uh, past uh, goods, which is not sold. So, uh, if we really look at a current ratio and the stock is included, then our, our calculations might not be so very accurate. So, we move on to another ratio which is called acid test ratio. Now, acid test ratio is a more severe test of liquidity. This is because inventories are not treated as liquid resources. There is no guarantee that invest inventories can be sold and they may become obsolete or deteriorate. They are therefore excluded from current assets when calculating the ratio. So, the acid test ratio what we do is it is like the same ratio, but what you notice here is we subtract the inventories from current assets. So, even in this ratio at least if they get around 1 is fine, 0 0.8 or 9 is also fine, but usually these questions when they come. Uh, in the exam, it is on a more comparable basis where you might have to compare between two companies or you might have to compare with one company on different uh, level of years. Now, this is uh, the balance sheet. I uh, will just go through a little bit on this. This is where all your data comes from for the calculation of liquidity. Now, balance sheet provides a summary of its assets, liabilities and capital. So, assets are refers to uh, the things owned by a business like uh, buildings, machinery, equipment. Uh, liabilities are the debts of the business and capital refers to the investments by uh, the owner. 
Now this is how a sample balance sheet looks like. So those students who study accounting will have no trouble understanding what this is about. But those who are not familiar with accounting, uh, this is where the data comes from. So it will be given in the question. All you have to look for is the current assets, current liabilities, the inventories. And look at the question what is expected of you. Now how to improve the liquidity position? Now the following measures might be used to either generate cash or save it. Now one thing you can do is sale of assets. You can get rid of assets that you are no longer using. Or you can even lease back instead of purchasing uh, f furniture or purchasing uh, sorry, the building, uh, you can actually lease the building uh, for a long time. Uh, you can dis delay the supplier credit terms. If you have 30 days to pay, maybe you can negotiate and ask for a uh, 20 days payment. Uh, factoring of debts. Sorry, the delay of supplier credit terms whereby they extend the number of uh, days that uh, they have to. If you have 30 days, you increase this for like uh, 60 more days, like that. Uh, factoring of debts. This is where the, de the, the debtor amount will be collected through a debt factoring house. Uh, and also use systems like just in time where you don't waste uh, stock of uh, raw materials or uh, goods that are required for production process and stockpile it. So in a just in time method the products come just in time to the company so the company doesn't have to uh, invest a lot of money on stock of goods. Now working capital, this is also an important term to understand. Now it is the amount of money needed to pay the day to day trading of a business. Now how to manage working capital? Now different businesses have different working capital needs. Now before I go into this, working capital, how is it calculated? It is current assets minus current liabilities. Now the managing uh, working capital depends on, upon the company. Uh, it depends on the size of the business, it depends on the inventory level, so debtors and creditors, so different businesses will have different working capital needs. But it is important to understand that every business will need a, a bit of a working capital to manage their daily uh, expenses. Now maintaining adequate levels of working capital. Now business need to keep adequate levels of working capital if they keep too little if that is current assets are too low and current li li liabilities are too high, they will start to encounter trading problems. So if a business does not, does not carry enough inventory of raw materials, it could find that production stops when, it, uh, when the items runs out. If it does not carry enough finished goods, it might be unable to fulfill orders on time. So this is where you need to uh, strike a balance. Uh, if there is not enough cash in the business, it might not be able to pay its bills on time. And if it has borrowed too much through trade credit, so it owes too much to creditors, uh, it might be unable to pay invoices when they are due. Now let's look at uh, two important terms, cash and profit. Now both are very important for a business, but uh, what is more important? Is cash more important or is profit more important? Of course, this is uh, up, on, up to the company to decide at which uh, period they are in. If it is a startup business, profit might not be the most important for that company uh, in a beginning uh, company. But for a company who is going on for a bit of time, profit could be very important because that is only when they can expand their business. Now, profit is the difference between the income of a business and its total cost while cash is the money received to the business in the form of cash. Now earning a profit is not always important. A number of businesses are not established with the aim of making profits. As you all know, there are non-profit organizations. So they actually don't require a profit. Now importance of cash. A potentially profitable business can fail because of poor management of cash flow. Now you cannot pay your debts with profit. You have to use cash. So if a company is not having enough cash flow, that means they could still go bankrupt and fail. It could be a very profitable company. Now cash is required for immediate spending to acquire resources and raw materials, to attract investors and to use a measure of as a use of a measure of performance too. Now what is the importance of profit? Now profit is one key element used to assess company's performance. Now that is where we calculate the profitability ratios. Now healthy profits will attain new investment in the company. Profit encourages efficiency and it can be distributed to employees as a bonus. Uh, you can use pro part of profit to pay off loans as well. So profit is also very important. 
Now, cash flow relates to the time of payments and receipt. Cash flow is important in the short term as a business must pay people and organization to whom it owes money. A profitable business may run out of cash while a business recording a loss may have a cash surplus. Uh, business selling goods on credit terms may record profits as sold, but the cash payment from customers will be received at some time in the future. Now, especially those companies who do credit sales, uh, it will be recorded in their profit and loss account uh, as sales. But if you look at the cash flow, they still didn't receive the money. So in a credit sale business, uh, the money is received only a bit later. So this is where that uh, clash comes in. So a business may receive cash at the beginning of the trading year from sales made in the previous year. Now this would increase the cash balance, but it will not affect the profit. Why? Because profit is already calculated last year. So purchase of fixed assets will reduce the cash balance because we are paying by money. But it will have no effect on the profit a company makes. This is because the purchase of assets is not treated as a business cost in the profit and loss account. It will be not treated as a uh, business cost. Now coming up to the last segment, why do business fail? Now cash and profit is also one aspect where a business can fail like if you are like i said before if you don't have enough cash but you are a very profitable company but you can't pay your debts uh, that is when a business can fail so if you look at the international market also there are many companies uh, which have gone bankrupt because they were unable to pay uh, their debts on time so why some businesses fail and why some succeed is a matter of debate. Now, although there are some common mistakes that can sink a business in no time, so we can classify them as internal causes and external causes. Now, let's first look at the internal causes of business failure. Now, one of the biggest thing is poor management of cash flow. Now, I'll give an example from uh, Maldives. Now, let's have a look at the resorts. Now, resort is a seasonal business. So, if they don't maintain a proper cash flow, uh, when it is off season and the tourists are not coming, they cannot manage paying their salaries to their staff or maintain other expenses. So, a cash flow management is very important for businesses like seasonal businesses. So, a poor management of cash flow you uh, can cause a business to fail if it is not properly managed. Uh, overestimation of sales. Suppose you expect 100,000 customers to buy from you and then you make your budgets based on that. But then what happens? You, for some reason, you don't get the customers and then you are in trouble. So that is again another thing a business could fail. Over trading, selling more than what you can cater for. So if you cannot meet the demand uh, by supplying the goods on time, that can also be a problem. Uh, Poor inventory control. Now, if the uh, company cannot manage its stocks, if, they, if the company is having a lot of stock of goods unsold, then uh, they will, a lot of money will be tied up into these. So this can also be a factor causing a business failure. A poor marketing. Now, marketing is also an important part. If customers do not know about your products, how can they buy? So a marketing is also an important part of a company's investment. They need to know uh, what products are available and so on. So if a poor marketing is done, it's likely that your, your business could fail because of lack of customers. Poor quality. Now, another thing the customers look for is the quality of goods. Now, if your goods are not very quality and then word of mouth goes on, yeah, this product is not very quality, nobody is interested in buying it. So you can actually fail. Now let's have a look at external causes. Now the difference between internal cause and external causes, internal causes are more linked to the business and it can be controlled by the business. But external causes are con 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 things that can happen outside the business which the business have no control over. So one of the thing is poor market condition. Now poor market condition means the market economy could go into a recession. For example, right now for all the traveling industries, uh, the airlines, uh, the hotels, these people are having a very low sales. Why? The market condition. F for right now, we are in a, in, a, in a situation where all the countries are going into a recession. So this can badly impact the market condition. People don't want to spend money. Uh, high competition. Another thing that can uh, 
cause a business failure is if there's a lot of competition coming in. Now, if you look at 20 years back, and if you look at the airline industry, there are very few airlines. But now if you look at, there are so many different types of airlines, budget airlines, uh, low cost carriers. So because of all of this competition, it has become a very challenging for the very high class air airlines, uh, which have been charging very high prices. So they might have, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a drop in their sales because of all of this competition. Though this could also be uh, a reason why businesses can fail. Economic changes, now things like uh, li linked to the business cycle like recession or other uh, changes in the economy like interest rate changes, uh, exchange rate fluctuations. So these are also part of economic. So especially those businesses on the import export business, if any changes in exchange rate can, can impact the company in a bad way. Even the same goes for interest rate. Usually the interest rate is linked with the uh, loans that the companies have taken and the financing is actually the financing cost. So basically uh, this can also impact businesses. Government regulations. Now government regulation, now every company which follows in a country, they also need to follow the government regulations. So a government regulation changes in, suppose let's just say government wants to charge another tax. So that is going to badly impact some businesses. So this can also result in business failure. Supplier issues. Now supplier is one person that is very much linked to the uh, chain of uh, resources that is in your company. So if a supplier is having issues with you, you might have trouble getting your product uh, pro uh, finished on time. So that can also be a reason why a business could fail. And another reason could be a natural phenomena. Now everybody knows right now the world is kind of at a hold. This is a natural phenomena. A virus is uh, going around and all the businesses are stopped. The countries are locked down. So businesses are suffering a lot. So this is going to hugely impact many, many businesses, especially in the uh, tourism sector, the airlines. So these this people uh, cannot travel because the borders are closed. The airlines have stopped. So because of a natural phenomena, all of this is happening. So another natural phenomena could be things like tsunami or things that is out of control of a business, which just happens naturally. So th these are some of the causes uh, that can cause business failure. So a business need to be very, very uh, flexible in order to uh, change their uh, strategies so they can survive uh, in the market. Now what measures can be taken to avoid failure? Now clear, clearly define and communicate the, the corporate vision, start with realistic goals, do not over expand the business too early in its life, avoid taking too much debt, avoid overspending, have a reserve fund, good location and making necessary changes with time. So these are some important steps that a company can take to avoid failures. Now I hope you have understood today's lesson. If you have any questions, please uh, uh, go into this link and you can send your question or you can even scan the QR code. So uh, we will take these questions to our panel discussion. Thank you so much.